Yes, okay. Good morning our dear candidates. I take this opportunity to thank God to be here before you. And you are also alive outside there. So we need to thank God because he has kept us alive. So today we are having another chance to have our lesson. The one before you is the one you know. And we are going to have our SST lesson. We are having our SST lesson. I think you can read by the one you know. The name is there. So we have not changed. I have not changed. I'm still the same person, you know. So, last time I gave you some work, I gave you some numbers, which we are going to do corrections today. So, get ready, get your pen, get your book, where you wrote that work, and we go through these questions one by one. So I hope everybody is ready. Let us go to our corrections. The question number one, how did the Christian missionaries help to end slave trade in Africa? Is that the question you wrote? Yes. Now, let us get the answer. For the question. This one here, how did the Christian missionaries help to end slave trade in Africa? The answer is Christian missionaries preached against slave trade. Christian missionaries preached against slave trade. That was question one. Question two, how was the construction of the Uganda Railway important in ending slave trade in East Africa? The answer is trains were used to carry goods instead of slaves. I repeat, trains were used to carry goods instead of slaves. The third question, why was Sir William Wilberforce regarded as the anti-slavery movement in the world? Our answer is he campaigned against slave trade in the world. He campaigned against slave trade in the world. Then we move to the next question. Why were the African rulers not willing to end slave trade in Africa? The answer is African rulers were benefiting from slave trade. African rulers were benefiting from slave trade. So that is our last number. I hope everybody has finished to write the corrections. Then we move to the next one. Our lesson for today, we are going to begin with a certain activity which is as usual our spelling game. So I told you that today you are going to have our spelling game and we have four words we are going to write. So we have
spelling game, the first word is explorers. The first word is explorers. I hope you are finished. Two, explorer. Explorer. The third one is exploration. Exploration. Then the last word is navigation. The last word is navigation. I hope you are finished, right? Now let us go through these words. Make sure that you have written the correct spelling. If you have written a wrong spelling, please don't rub. Cross that one and write the correct one. So our first word is explorers. It is there, the spelling is there. That's our first word. The second word is explorer. It's also there. Explorer is there. The third word is exploration. I hope you are watching and you are seeing the correct spellings. Then the last word is navigation. Navigation. So if you have finished to mark, if you have got four out of four, please award yourself four out of four. If it is a two out of four, please don't cheat. Put it two out of four. Okay. So we are finished with our spelling game. So we are moving to our topic of today. And what we are going to handle today, some of you have the notes. So there is no need of you repeating to copy the notes. It is only those who do not have the notes who can copy these notes. For you who has the notes, please go through your work. So we are going to our work for today. Our topic there is explorers in Africa. Now, when you are talking about explorers in Africa, in our spelling game, I gave you some words to spell the first one was explorers, the second, was, second one was explorer, exploration, then the last one was navigation. So we are going to get the meaning of those words one by one. So we are beginning with the word explorers. When we talk of explorers, explorers are people who moved from their countries to other countries to find new information about new things. Now, when you talk of explorers, explorers came from outside the continent of Africa. They were majorly from outside the countries. So, they came to Africa to find more information about Africa. So that's why we define the word explorers. It means there were many, not one, there were many of them who came to Africa. And they moved from different countries in Europe to come to Africa to find more information about new things. So we are going to look at the word explorer. Explorer is also there. The word explorer means a person who moves from his country to another country to find new information about new things. So when you look at the two words, explorers means a group of people. They were moving, they were many. Then the word explorer means one. That's why I'm using the word a person. So, 
Then we go to our next word that is exploration. The activity of these people moving from their countries to Africa to find new things in Africa is what we call explore, exploration. That was the act of traveling to new places or countries to find new information about new things. So that was the act which was done by the explorers. They are traveling. It's what we call exploration. Then our next word is a navigation. Navigation means sailing on water bodies. Remember in P6 when you learned about Vasco da Gama. There was a man in Portugal who opened a school of sailors in Portugal known as Prince Henry the Navigator because he had love traveling on water bodies and he opened a school for training sailors. That is in a port in Portugal known as Port Sagres. So navigation means sailing on water bodies. Now let us move and see which way these things these people wanted to find out in Africa. And some of those things, they were also there in their countries. But they were not certain whether Africa is African continent is also like their country. So they wanted to find out what is in Africa. Is it only animals? Is it only mountains? Is it only soil? Is it only trees? Oh, there are no people at, at all. So let us look at the things they wanted. New things explorers wanted to discover in Africa. So I have a list of those things. We are going to see one of them. They wanted to see mountains. As you know, mountains are not only in Africa, but they are also in other continents. So what they wanted now to have a comparison, whether what they were having in their countries, it is also in Africa. Another one is that they also wanted to find out more about lakes, rivers. So we have the second one is lakes. Lakes are not only in Africa, but they are also in their countries. So they wanted to compare whether the lakes are also in Africa, like the lakes they have in their countries. Then they also wanted to find more about rivers. Just like they also have rivers in their countries. And one of the great rivers which attracted the attention of the whites was River Nile. Because they were hearing about River Nile which was carrying, pouring water to the Mediterranean Sea. And that is a large water body which borders Africa and Europe. So they wanted to find more about River Nile. Where does that river begin flowing from? So that was the great river which attracted many explorers. They wanted to find where it begins. They had already known where it ends, that it pours its water to the Mediterranean Sea. And which Mediterranean Sea borders Africa and the continent of Europe. We also have another thing they wanted to find out in Africa, and that was climate. They wanted to compare the climate in Africa and the climate in their own countries. So our climate in Africa is favorable, even in their countries, it's also favorable to them. So they wanted to know, to relate, whether there is good climate in Africa. They also wanted to find more about vegetation. 
the plant cover you see in an area is what we call vegetation they wanted to find more about vegetation in Africa then we move the nature of the soil those people also wanted to find more about the nature of the soil in Africa and when some of them came to Africa they realized that the soil in Africa was very fertile and those explore, explorers as they were moving they were moving from one place to another and before they leave that place where they have visited they make a report about what they have seen in that area if there are lakes they write about lakes rivers if they are there they write about that the nature of the soil they write about it a vegetation what they have seen there they write about it then people and culture was also another thing which attracted them they wanted to see what is in africa is it the people if they are there what do they do what cultures do they have do they have the same cultures like them so they wanted to compare and when they came to africa they realized that there were people in africa just like them and the africans also had their own culture just like just like the way they also had their own cultures then they also wanted to find more about the animal resources when we talk of animal resources it includes domestic animals and wild animals so these are some of the things these explorers wanted to come and see in africa and to compare with what they have in their own countries so we have mountains lakes rivers climate vegetation nature of the soil people and culture and animal resources so let us look at some of this now when you look at that diagram that is one of the things they wanted to find out in africa that one is an example of a mountain in africa I told you that they wanted to find more about uh, mountains. Those were the new things they wanted to discover in Africa. So that diagram shows you an example of uh, a mountain. We have very many mountains in Africa. Then we go to the next diagram. Shows you a river flowing. As I told you, one of the rivers which attracted them was river Nile but I'm not saying this is river Nile but this is an example of a river which those people were interested they wanted to find more about rivers in Africa then we go the next one it is a lake we have very many lakes in Africa and that diagram shows you an example of a lake which means they were interested to find more about lakes in Africa as we continue you look at people dancing and that is their culture so when those people came to Africa they realized that the people there are people in Africa just like them but only what makes them different is their color but some of the people in Africa they are almost have the same color like them so when they came to Africa, they were interested to see the people, and they saw the people, and they saw how they used to perform their activities, like their traditional dances. And some of them were so much interested to see their cultural dances. Then we have that one is vegetation. They wanted to see vegetation in Africa, and they compare with the vegetation they have in their own countries then you have the next one is the nature of the soil they wanted to see the nature of the soil how was the soil in africa when they came they saw that the soils in africa were very fertile so then we move to the next one that one is a diagram showing only wild animals and those were some of the things they were interested to find out in africa 
the animal resources. I told you they wanted to see domestic and wild animals. Then the last diagram shows you, you can see some fruits they are planted. Not fruits as well. But I can see as if they are carrots. So it shows that the soil in Africa was very good. That's why our diagrams, the ones down here, show the nature of the soil. So there are some crops grown there, which show that the soil in Africa was so good for crop cultivation. So our dear candidates, those are some of the things these people wanted to find out in Africa. So let us move ahead and we look at something else. We have their reasons why explorers came to Africa. Reasons why they were interested in coming to Africa. Our first reason is that some of them wanted to find a source of river Nile, which I told you. They wanted to find a source of river Nile. Because they were wondering that there is a river in Africa which carries a lot of water to the Mediterranean Sea. But they wanted to find out where the city begin flowing from. So they wanted to find it is a source. That's why you find out that a man like Sir Samuel Baker, when he was sent, he started from the Mediterranean Sea and he started where it pours its water from it is a mouse. Started following River Nile from it is a mouse. The purpose he wanted to find it is a source. As he was traveling downwards, he met with some explorers who were also sent to, to find more about the source of River Nile. And they met in a place called Gondokoro, that is in Sudan. And when they met there, the explorers who met there was Sir Samuel Baker and his wife, and John Speak and James Grant. When those European explorers met there, John Speak and James Grant told Sir Samuel Baker that they had already seen the source of River Nile. Now, when we talk of seeing the source of River Nile, they were the first. It is wrong to say that they were the first explorers to discover the source of River Nile because they were not the first to see. They were just directed where the source of River Nile was. There are four the first people who discovered where River Nile begins flowing from were the local people in the area or the Africans themselves. So, Africans were the first people to discover where River Nile begins flowing from. So, for them, the European explorers were the first to see the source of River Nile because they were directed by the Africans that this is where River Nile begins from. Like when you look at Lake Victoria, Lake Victoria, the people who were living around Lake Victoria knew that there was Lake Victoria. They even had a name for Lake Victoria in Uganda that was Lake Nalubale. Now, when he speak he came and was directed where Lake Victoria was. He gave a name that was Lake Victoria for remembering the Queen of England by name Victoria. So that's why today we are having Lake Victoria. Not only that one, some of those European explorers changed the name of lakes in Africa. And they were giving those lakes names for their important people in their own countries. Like we even had a waterfalls on River Nile, which is today known, uh, which was called Ripon Falls. Ripon Falls was one of the president of the Royal Geographical Society in uh, Europe, who had sent them to find more about River Nile. So that was 
Some of them wanted to find a source of river Nile. Then we got to Tom. Some of them wanted to find navigable rivers in Africa. Meaning that they wanted to find which rivers in Africa can be used for transport, which do not have problems, like the hidden rocks, dangerous wild animals. So when they came, they wanted to find out which rivers in Africa can be used for water transport with limited problems. Then we got the next one. They, some of them wanted to win a good relationship with African rulers. That's why you find out that Africa had kingdoms. In those kingdoms, they had rulers. Like in East Africa, we talk of Buganda Kingdom. It was there before even the coming of the European explorers. Karabia Kingdom was there before even the coming of the European explorers. Wanga Kingdom was there before even the coming of the European explorers. So, when those European explorers came, they realized that Africans also had their own system of government. They were organized under kingdoms, under chiefdoms. Therefore, when they came, they had to make sure that in those kingdoms, they had to maintain good relationship. Meaning that they had to donate or they had to give some of the kings their gifts. So they were giving them some gifts which they had brought from their own countries. And that was one way of softening the African hearts, of winning the African Africans so that they were able to accept even other Europeans who were going to come after the exe prolas. Then we have some who are looking for territories for their home governments. They were looking for territories for their home governments. So, these are some of the reasons why those European explorers came to Africa. So, let us move to the next one. And here we are going straight away to West Africa. Somebody can say, what about East Africa? Where there are no explorers who visited East Africa. Those, the explorers who visited East Africa, they were there. But want to look at, begin with those, at least in East Africa, you learned them in P5, when you talked about explorers in Uganda. P6, you learned about those European explorers, like John Speak, James Grant, Sir Samuel Becker, and many others. So I want to go straight to some of the European explorers who visited West Africa. And one of them, the well-known explorer who visited West Africa, was Mungo Park. So let us see some of them. So we have Mungo Park. The spelling is there, Mungo Park. And we are going to see even his Photos. Even this photo is there. So that was a man, a famous man in West Africa, a well known man in West Africa. That was Mungo Park, was one of the European explorers who visited West Africa. It is not only Mungo Park who visited West Africa, but there were also others which you are going to see. One of them, I said, Mungo. Now here, you only write, don't write after one explorer. Don't write after one explorer. Then again, you write explorers who visited West Africa. You only write once. Explorers who visited West Africa. And only you write their names. You don't bother to draw their photographs. So we have, there were two brothers there. That's Richard Lander and John Landa. So that is the that is Richard Landa and we have John Landa. As we continue 
we have Clapperton, which is also there, very nice looking man. Denham is also there, Dixon, very handsome. Henrich Bath is also there. So those are some. Then we move to Gaspard Moline. So also there looks like a woman, but that was a man. Okay. The brother is also there. Looks like a Taliban, but was not a Taliban. That was the nature of his dressing. Gordon Lane. So, so there. Supposing. Then we have the female European explorer who visited the West Africa and southern part of Africa. That was Mary Henrietta Kingley the female European explorer who risked her life leaving her home country coming to Africa. She's there. Very beautiful woman. Then we also have Rene. That's also another European explorer. And that one, those were some of the European explorers who visited West Africa. So, we want to look at the famous man that is Mungo Park in West Africa. We are about to end. Mungo Park was a young Scottish doctor, meaning that that man was trained as a surgeon. But he also loved to move to other places to find more about new things. So Mungo Park was a young Scottish doctor. Mungo Park was also a Scottish explorer, live alone being a doctor, but was also an explorer who visited West Africa. Mungo Park was a famous explorer in West Africa. When you look at the word famous, it means he was a well-known explorer in West Africa. When they talk about explorers in West Africa, the first explorer somebody mentions about is Mungo Park. So he was a well-known explorer in West Africa. Mungo Park was sent to West Africa by African Association between 1794 to 1795. So that man called Mungo Park made two journeys to Africa. He made the first journey, then he came to Africa on his second journey. His first journey was in 19, I mean in 1795. And the second journey was in 1805. So that one brings us to the end of today's lesson. But we shall go deep to find more, to learn more about those European explorers one by one. Before I sum up, I have activity which you are going to do. Question one, give the meaning of the terms below. Explorer, explorers, exploration. Question two, mention any three reasons why explorers visited Africa. That's question two. Question three, write any four explorers who visited the West. Then the first one mentioned a famous explorer in West Africa. So that is 